Uh, the pilot's about uh, an ER doctor who's at a difficult point in his life who happens upon a drive-by shooting while driving through a bad area of Atlanta. And he gets out of the car and he goes over to help. And while he's trying to stop a 10-year-old boy from bleeding to death in the middle of the street, the guys who did the drive-by shooting start coming back. And he's forced to make this choice of what to do in this situation. And he picks up a gun off the street and fights off the gang members and kills one of them and winds up sort of smack dab in the middle of a gigantic gang war that's going on in Atlanta. And so the rest of the season plays out all of the consequences of this one action and how he deals with what he's gotten himself into and conf he has to confront what is it going to take to save this patient. And because of where he is in his life, this is not a patient that he is going to lose. And so it's basically taking a doctor outside of the hospital uh, going, <laughs> a doctor who is willing to do anything, anything at all <laughs> to save a patient, so. Wow, the first, uh, the first scene that we shot in the pilot was actually John coming to the hospital um, after all of the stuff has gone on. Uh, it's like his first day back at work after killing a guy. Um, and so that was the first scene that we shot in the pilot, and then he has an interaction with, uh, with Gretchen. With Gretchen. I can't remember if it's when he walks in was the first one I shot, or if it's when we're dealing with the boyfriend. Oh, him. actually, no. Yeah, you're right. No, that sorry. That was the that was the first <laughs> scene of the series that we shot. Yes. Well, what was the first scene of the pilot? That's such a good question. What was the first? I think scene? it's it's he walks in, and I'm actually having a cigarette break. Yes. In the hospital? In the yes, hospital, yes, yes. and there's a patient there, and it kind of gives you just a little bit of tone of like, right. Right, just don't this mess with Gretchen. Yeah, right? sorry. This is what yeah. she's going to do. Yeah, the first scene, yeah, yeah that's absolutely yeah. right. The first scene that we shot was John, it's late, it's, it's one of the first scenes in the, in the story in the hospital. It's John late in the hospital, and he has to go find Gretchen, and then he finds Gretchen, and she's smoking. Nice. And then what was the what what was was your first scene? I, I think it was actually the scene with Ollie, um, Albert Bates, who plays my son, and Jason Amara. It's a kitchen scene. I think the breakfast scene, I'm making the eggs, and he's c come home from a long night at work. And it was kind of great, actually, because I got to jump into this chemistry with the two of them, and we were figuring it out. And um, for me, it helped set the tone for, right. for the rest of the shoot for me, so it was great. We were laughing about this when I, we just saw each other the other day and I, and he said, it's always weird, you know, when I assume everyone works together. Just we never have, had a scene. We don't have But our scenes. chemistry <laughs> offset is amazing. <laughs> but we really like to hang out. We really like each other. Really like each other. Um, we have a good time. But. but it's, yeah, it's strange. I don't, I don't have any scenes with Chris Chalk. I don't have any with you. I don't have any with the majority of the people, actually. Like Tim Pepper um, comes in. I can say that yeah. he's a guest star, yeah. Uh, Tim Pepper and um, Jason and Albert, who plays my son, or who I'm with most of the time. And Jason's dad. Oh, yeah, and then Kevin Ty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the script was fantastic. Um, I'm a huge fan of Matt, so that was a bonus. Same. Um, <laughs> and I guess, you know, I'd love to say that this just like fell on my desk and I was like, yeah, I'll do that. But I had to audition and go through the whole process, you know, and it. It was so exciting and I wanted it so badly because the script, I mean, it was on the page. And I think if you can see it when you're reading it, it's always a good sign and it was flawless to me. I was like, this show is going to be amazing. And then I had my chemistry um, test with Jason and the further along I got, the more excited I got because I thought, oh, this could actually happen. And I was so thrilled when I was able to, to be a part of it, yeah. I agree with a lot of that. The, the writing was great. And, and again, like I was saying before with the pilot, you're, you're not really sure where the season's going to go. And that's what was even cooler for me, like reading the next episode and the next where the series was going. I'm like, oh my God, this is better than I expected and thought. And I just, Gretchen to me was, it, it really pulled at my heart. There's something very fun to play with her and there's there's a lot. Um, her her upbringing and who she is, it was just, I'm like, this could be so fun to play. And as the series goes on and what he gave me to bring to life was a really beautiful thing for me. So I was super excited about everything and I, I fell in love with Gretchen. And all the characters, I will say that's the biggest, one of the biggest draws for me was it's believable. It's totally real. The characters are all so rich. There's not a single storyline that falls flat or, oh, we don't really, like every single person yeah, has Anytime a scene material. is on, you're like, wait, 
I want to keep following that. And then they go back and you're like, okay, and then you're excited about this. And then when they go back to your, your they're always want you keep wanting more from whoever's on the screen. And I the think. fact, yeah, and the fact that Matt writes really exciting roles for women, it's like you know, it's a it's a joy to go and work with someone. I mean, Samantha could have been the wife that just stays at home and doesn't do anything, and not to whatever. But uh, you know, you see some roles that are like, oh, that would be a fun role, but where is it going? And he found ways to layer every All art, us, and yeah. it was empowering and it was exciting. And I feel like we are a group of people that really understand the importance of that. So it's so exciting. Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, no, I mean, I find it like John's voice, uh, you know, sort of comes to me like sort of sounds like me in a certain mode. Uh, <laughs> so it's not, uh, I guess that the thing that I did find coming from Bernadette, I mean, it, they do share that DNA of like, uh, a hero in a difficult moral situation um, trying to, to figure it out. I'd say it's, in a way, I, I would say it's not so much darker as just um, there's a there's something that comes with, oh, wait a second, like this is a world where actually uh, there's a, like a lot less violence on complications than there was on Burn Notice. It's just that when people get hurt, they <laughs> really get hurt. like. And, and they don't get better quickly, and that kind of thing. So Burn Notice was, existed in a universe where, you know, you everybody who was in fights, they were the sorts of people who got into fights, and they could handle it, and that kind of thing. Whereas on complications, a relatively minor injury, like, you know, someone getting hit really hard in the face, well, that could break your jaw. Like, that's a huge deal. And so I wouldn't say that that's dark precisely. i just say it, it's maybe a little bit more challenging to be dealing with things that are that are kind of that grounded and, and say as as the season goes on uh particularly as gretchen comes to the fore there's a lot more humor and lightness that comes out um i think part of it is that that's a very natural part of how i write like the, the humor uh but what i found was when you're writing about a guy who's lost a daughter um, and is in this situation it's a little bit hard to be like oh and then he has a joke that he tells you know so it was, it, it felt natural to, to, to write it that way. But as the season went on, a lot of it is about, you know, this guy kind of finding a way to live after losing, the, losing his daughter and coming out of his shell and finding, you know, his relationship again and finding, uh, you know, a professional partnership that is unconventional but dynamic. And uh, so, yeah, there's, there's more humor as it goes on. Although I would not characterize the finale as particularly funny. Uh, well, we actually, USA turned into a very natural fit for it. I mean, one of the things was, uh, you know, you think about, like, where is the network going and what do they want to do? And, you know, I obviously had super strong partnerships at USA. I like all those people. They're really smart. And when they told me, no, no, this is the kind of thing that we're, we're up for now, I was like, okay, let's do it. And I think if you look at their other programming, they're really, uh, you know, they're really changing it up and doing some things that are challenging and interesting and, you know, swinging for the fences, so I'm, I was all for it. Um, I, you know, when you're when you do a show for five, you know, four or five years, and you're that same character, I, I'm ready for people to see me in another light and play something completely different. I mean, Vanessa and Gretchen, they, there's not <laughs> a lot of similarities there, um, but just the fact that the whole the show between everything that my relationship with John and what we're dealing with outside of the hospital and what he's dealing with to keep his family together and me helping protect my sister and us being in the middle of this gang war that we didn't expect, don't know how to deal and keep having these complicated situations right in front of our face and every time we turn a corner something else like blows up and we, we're just trying to figure out how to get out of this mess but meanwhile there's so many things happening but people, you know, someone could die, someone could lose their job, someone could go to jail all at any moment. Um, so I just want them to come along on this journey with all of us. It's it's a really great show. There's, you know, you, there's relatable things. There's times you'll tear up. There are times you will laugh. There are times where you're like, I cannot believe that just happened. Um, so I just want them to come along on the journey, and if they watch it, you'll like it. If you don't, <laughs> then you're bad. You're fired. <laughs> Actually, I, I should just say uh, that the story of casting Jessica <laughs> was oh like, I, I mean, full disclosure, Josh is a good friend of mine. Uh, I had not seen Gossip Girl, and I 
just got a, a video of this person, Jessica Zor, doing the part. And, uh, on a in. cell phone with my 12-year-old yeah. sister reading Jason O'Mara's lines with my stepdad filming in my mom's kitchen in Wisconsin. Yeah. That is awesome. So, like, <laughs> with the lighting was really bad. And her 12-year-old sister at one point has to say the word bitch and, like, kind of doesn't want to say it and starts giggling while she says it. And she's reading like, the off-camera you line. be. <laughs> she could, I almost, like, broke in the scene, but I'm like, just keep going. It was so hilarious. So I'm watching this thing, and I'm like, oh, she's really good. But... Honestly, my reaction was like, is she like a professional actress? Because like, has she done stuff? Because this is like a cell phone video. <laughs> clearly taken by a child. Is that like a, and they're like, no, she's fantastic. Because it was so late in the process. And I'm like, you know, I glanced at her resume. I'm like, oh, she's done things. I can see words on this page, but I didn't really read it. And then it's so great to be like, and then she came in and she crushed the audition and, and we, we hired her. And it's so wonderful to be, to have cast someone just because you liked their performance and then later realize, oh, she's super famous. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> this is so exciting. 